now. Joining us from more is Texas Republican Congressman Kevin Brady, chair of the Congressional Joint Economic Committee. Uh, Congressman, it's great to have you here this morning. And I actually want to start with something that John Engler of Business Roundtable told us yesterday as well. He fingered Texas and said, look, they said, you know, you've got Rick Perry saying congrats for, to us for taking business from other states uh, because of our lower tax rates. How can the U.S. now turn around and blame its companies for arbitraging global territories in the same way? Well, well, you can't. The president's wrong, really, on two counts. Uh, one, businesses in America pay a lot of taxes. Unfortunately, they pay the highest corporate rate in the world. And so for them to compete, survive, uh, grow uh, in an com increasingly competitive world, when they're competing against uh, companies whose tax rates are half of theirs, they have to do something. The answer, uh, truthfully, is to fix this broken tax code. In the president's wrong, he's not reached out. For Republicans in Congress. We've been working on ways and means three years every day on this, and the White House, frankly, hasn't darkened our door. But, Congressman, you know the real problem is that there's just no meeting of the minds on this issue. So the White House has its approach, Congress, or at least the House has its approach. It seems as though there's not going to be any kind of compromise that can breach those two di different views, by the way, of how to move the country. So there's not going to be anything that happens on this issue, is there, in terms of corporate tax overhaul out of Congress? You know, we don't count on the president leading like in so many areas. That's why House Republicans have developed a tax reform discussion draft, first top to bottom rewrite in 30 years. It's a start to move this ball in the right direction. We think we can make it even more pro growth. So if the president isn't going to lead, we're going to, and we will stop inversions when we fix this broken code. Congressman, what, what's so hard about this? I mean, it used to be back in the day in Congress, there was compromise. Um, Republicans wanted one thing, Democrats wanted another, you meet in the middle. I think there are enough people who probably agree that the corporate taxes could come down, that some loopholes could be closed, that something could get done. But it seems like uh, folks in Congress get rewarded for talking about stuff in their positions more than actually getting stuff done. What's so hard about this? You know, uh, the president leading on key issues would be immensely helpful. That's uh, how it's gotten done in the past. But I'll tell you this, uh, in the House, we're not acting, uh, we're not waiting. Uh, we've passed now more than 300 bills to the Senate. They don't have to agree on them, but pass something out that we can try to hit that common ground on. We've acted on tax reform. Uh, we'd love the Senate to, to do its job. So what would leadership in this case look like, Congressman? Another executive order? I mean, he suggested, you know, no, to, he suggested to, to Steve Leisman, why not put a clean inversion bill on the table? Don't try and tackle full-scale tax reform right now. Only deal with this issue because capital is leaving our country, and that is a fact that we have many data points at this point to look at. I mean, what, what does leadership look like? Yeah. It isn't an executive order, and it certainly isn't this inversion bill, which ignores the root cause of these companies' uncompetitiveness, and it actually makes the problem worse. My prediction is, but in if the, the meantime, president's what bill, do you do? hold on, if my my prediction is the president's bill were to pass, it would force more American jobs overseas, not simply where they're uh, located, where their uh, official uh, work is. Congressman, I, I want to ask you a question on sanctions before we let you go, but first, just have you respond as well to something Mark Cuban told our network this morning. He said that uh, basically the American public shouldn't back companies doing this because it's effectively going to end up raising tax rates for everybody. And I think it was Stan Druckenmiller who echoed that, saying he thinks ultimately it's going to be the shareholders of these corporations uh, that are paying more in taxes in some way, shape, or form as this all moves forward. You know, I, what I see is that American companies, struggling to create jobs here in America. They're finding they can't compete around the world with this broken tax code. They're doing what they need to do to try to grow themselves as a company. I think the best uh, tax relief is not only fixing this broken code, but doing it in a way where companies who succeed can invest their profits here in the United States. They can't do that today. So I think the root cause is what we ought to tackle. All right, we'll see if we get there. And like I said, before we let you go this morning, uh, there's more news out of the EU potentially levying sanctions against Russia uh, on technology. This could include technology, but potentially exclude their oil sector. Uh, what can you tell us about further plans the U.S. has uh, with regard to sanctions against Russia? You know, right now, the president's really making, I think, minor steps in the sanctions area. He doesn't seem to be serious about taking the step. And frankly, Europe hasn't been. Uh, serious about taking the real steps that would cause um, a change in behavior in Russia. Sanctions only work uh, if everyone is involved in it. Uh, and until we get U.S. and Europe on the same page, 
I don't think we'll see a change in behavior. Interesting. Congressman Kevin Brady of Texas this morning, thank you for your views. Thank you. Appreciate it.